Hey guys, so last video of our complement pathway section, and we're going to talk about the mannose binding lectin pathway. Now, this pathway is extremely similar to the complement cascade, the classical one, and the only difference is how we get to cut C2 and C4. So, we're going to start out with mannose binding lectin. This is an acute phase protein that's produced by the liver, so, whenever the body is undergoing any kind of inflammatory process, these acute phase proteins, including protein C, ferritin, hepcin, they're all regulated by the liver, and they're sent out to help uh, deal with the inflammation, the infection, or the trauma. So we have our mandose binding lectin produced by the liver. It's going to go ahead and bind this protein called MBL-associated protease. So this is uh, also the short form for this is MASP. So now we have a complex formed of MBL and MASP, okay? Uh, and this complex can now cleave C2 and C4. And from here, we're just doing exactly what we had in the classical cascade. So C4 goes to C4A, C4B. C2 goes to C2A, C2B. The B components are going to continue the pathway, and the A components are vasoactive, and they're going to help with dilating our blood vessels and getting those inflammatory cells to where they need to go. So C4B and C2B come together, they form C4B2B, which is also known as C23 convertase, so this is a refresher from the classical pathway. C4B2B then obviously is going to cleave C3 because it's C3 convertase to C3A and C3B. C3B is going to go ahead and form our C5 convertase by binding with C3 convertase. And then our C5 convertase is going to cleave C5 into C5A and C5B. C5A is again vasoactive, and C5B is going to bind with C6789 to form the membrane attack complex, which is going to poke a hole in our bacteria, release the contents, and cause the bacteria to die. All right, so it's essentially all of the classical cascade. I'll have the link for the classical cascade in the, in the video uh, description so that you can take a look at it because it has some more details about some of the eight components. But... The important thing to know here is that we have the mannose binding lectin just floating around in our serum, produced when we have inflammation by the liver. And an important thing about mannose binding lectin is you can have a deficiency, and this deficiency can be genetic. So mannose binding lectin is encoded by the MBL2 gene. And some people have an MBL2 gene mutation which causes mannose binding lectin deficiency. These people are obviously going to be predisposed to having higher rates of infection. Now, the associations aren't entirely clear about how each of these three complement cascade pathways uh, supplement each other because, of course, you can go to the alternative pathway or the classical pathway in order to supplement these deficiencies. So, just a heads up so that you would know about this association. You can have mannose binding lectin deficiency if you have an MBL2 gene deficiency, which predisposes you to infection. Alright, I hope this video helped, and I'll see you in the next one.